Hello and welcome to Daily Bread. I'm so glad that you've joined us today. Today's devotional will be brought to us by our production manager here at Blue Mountain Television, Daniel Biggs. Daniel, welcome to Daily Bread. It's a privilege to be here. It's been a while, but we're happy to have you back. Thanks for having me. Now, as we always do, let's open with a word of prayer. Lord, thank you so much for this day that you've given to each one of us for your blessings. In spite of all that's going on, I pray, Lord, that you will bless us as we open your word, as we study and read. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Due to the worldwide COVID-19 pandemic, a few people are asking, is this the end of time or is this part of God's plagues or if this is the wrath of God? Uh, most people are asking, if there is a God, where is he in all of this? By sharing some basic biblical insights, I believe it'll be very clear why we are having this pandemic. This pandemic is not the end of the world. To be more accurate, this pandemic was caused by a violation of God's health laws. And why are fundamental health laws rebelled against? Because of a separation of God. God is not among his people. Deuteronomy 31, 17 says, Then my anger shall be kindled against them in that day, and I will forsake them, and I will hide my face from them, and they shall be devoured. And many evils and troubles shall befall them, so that they will say in that day, Are not these evils come upon us, because our God is not among us? When God is rejected, His laws are rejected. Therefore, He is not among those who do not want Him, leaving them to reap what they have sown. God does not force Himself upon anyone. The Creator has given us a precious gift of choice. It has been stated that the virus originated in Wuhan, China, and most likely from eating unclean animals, including bats coming from open-air meat markets that are often cruel to animals and incredibly unsanitary. According to Health.com, Corin Miller wrote on February 3, 2020, Overall, the origin of the novel coronavirus is still filled with what-ifs and maybes. But according to most reports, it's likeliest that bats and possibly snakes are to be blamed for the animal carriers of the 2019 NCOV. Therefore, this outbreak was caused by breaking laws of health simply and clearly listed in the Bible that have been given to us by our Creator for our own good. Here they are in plain language. Leviticus 11:13 says, "These are the birds you are to regard as unclean and they are not to be eaten because they are unclean. The eagle, the vulture, the black vulture, the red kite, any kind of black kite, any kind of raven, the horned owl, the screech owl, the gull, any kind of hawk, the little owl, the cormorant, the great owl, the white owl, the desert owl, the osprey, the stork, any kind of heron, the hopo, and the bat. There are specific functions of these animals that makes them a poor choice for food. Hawks, owls, and eagles eat unclean animals themselves for our benefit and provide a valuable role in nature. The Bible gives clear and concise instruction on what the Creator has given us for food and that which we should not eat. Many deadly viruses, including HIV, Ebola, and SARS, are caused from violating the clearly laid out biblical principles. Here's an article by Matthew Brown found on usatoday.com posted March 18th, 2020. It's titled, The Coronavirus Pandemic Resulted from Human Consumption of Animals. On March 15th, vegan influencer Ed Winters, who often goes by the name Earthling Ed on the social media, posted a graphic to his Instagram account stating that COVID-19 was caused by eating animals. The new coronavirus pandemic would not have started if we didn't farm and eat animals. Winters wrote. The post lists several other diseases that reached epidemic and pandemic levels, and it asserts that the one thing they all have in common is they started because of our exploitation of animals. 
The graphic on the post concludes that COVID-19 would not exist if the world was vegan. Your personal choice to eat animals impacts every living being on this planet. Now, I've heard Christians call it the Chinese virus and made in China. The blame game doesn't help. Uh, they are not our enemies, they are our neighbors, and they need the Word of God. Do not take from this that I'm blaming bats or, or China. It is due to a lack of truth. You cannot be angry with somebody if they don't know any better, and especially if the light is being withheld from them. There's more to this picture you might need to know about. We must include an event that happened just before this outbreak. In an article written by Leah Marianne Klett on ChristianPost.com dated September 17, 2019, titled, China Makes Churches Replace Ten Commandments with Xi Jinping Quotes. This is what the devil has always done. And the article says, Churches across China's central province of Henan have been forced to replace the Ten Commandments with President Xi Jinping's quotes amid pressure from the government, a human rights magazine has revealed. Bitter Winter reports that the Ten Commandments have been removed from nearly every three-self church and meeting venue in a county of Luoyang and replaced with the president's quotes as part of the Chinese Communist Party's efforts to cynicize Christianity. And here's another source, and this one's by Reverend Johnson, posted on September 19th, 2019, on intellectualtakeout.org, and it's titled, China Replaces Ten Commandments with Socialist Propaganda. The article says, Congregations in China's officially recognized Protestant church have been forced to replace God's commandments to Moses with a quotation about the triumph of socialism, according to a religious liberty watchdog. The action literally substitutes socialism as an idol in violation of the first commandment. Now, the United States of America has Christian roots with men and women who believed in God. In the Declaration of Independence, we can find that America's forefathers believed in God and sought His protection and blessing. Listen to these verses from the Declaration of Independence. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And here's another one. We, therefore, the representatives of the United States of America in general Congress assembled, appealing to the supreme judge of the world for the rectitude of our intentions. Here our forefathers appealed to God to make our country great. Thanks to God, we are a country of great freedom where people can hold different beliefs and live together peaceably, forming the greatest country in the world. We are blessed to have religious freedom, and where there is no religious freedom, the conscience is forced, the people are oppressed, and the light is withheld. The government of China is not like ours. They do not have religious freedom as we do. The laws of God are being withheld, and unfortunately, they are also being broken, leading to a devastating conclusion. In Great Controversy, uh, page 584, we read, Every nation has its laws which command respect and obedience. No government could exist without them. And can it be conceived that the creator of the heavens and the earth has no law to govern the beings he has made? Let us not be quick to judge China. Right from the pulpit, Christians all over the world are teaching God's laws are done away with and that we are free from God's laws. From the same page of Great Controversy, it says, no error accepted by the Christian world strikes more boldly against the authority of heaven. None is more directly opposed to the dictates of reason. None is more pernicious in its results than the modern doctrine so rapidly gaining ground that God's law is no longer binding upon men. And that's Great Controversy 584. On the next page, it says this, 
Already the doctrine that men are released from obedience to God's requirements has weakened the force of moral obligation and opened the floodgates of iniquity upon the world. Lawlessness, dissipation, and corruption are sweeping in upon us like an overwhelming tide. The whole system of religious principles and doctrines which should form the foundation and framework of social life seems to be a tottering mass ready to fall to ruin. And Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. And that's John 14, 15. Let no condemnation be felt towards China. Rather, replace that with love and compassion for the people of this earth that they may find love and truth in Jesus. Have sympathy for those who have separated themselves from the word of God and do not despise them. Pray for them. Pray for this world to turn to the Creator which is revealed in the loving, healing, supernatural life of Jesus. This is a major opportunity for China uh, to please turn to the Creator which is found in the face of Jesus. Lord, help us all, especially China and the world who does not know you. May your deep love and wisdom be fed to your children. Please let them see their need of you, our Father. The God of China is the God of the Bible, even if they do not worship Him. And He is filled with compassion and mercy. 2 Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Father in heaven, just want to thank you so much for the privilege uh, to share a message, especially during this time. And Lord, we just pray that you put a special hedge around us all. And Lord, we just pray that we would turn to you, that we'd seek you, and that we would find you, Lord. We thank you for all the things that you do for us. And thank you for the peace and protection which you provide. In Jesus' name. Amen.